In this video, we'll talk about afterload, the factor that affects the overall force of ventricular contraction. During systole, when a left ventricle starts contracting, the pressure within the ventricle rapidly increases. Because the aortic diastolic pressure is 80 mm of mercury, the aortic valve does not open until the ventricular pressure rises above this pressure. When a ventricular pressure becomes 81, this pressure pushes the aortic valve open and ejection begins. So after load is a pressure the ventricle should generate to open the valve and eject the blood. What is the pressure we need to open the valve? It is diastolic blood pressure. It is very important to know that the diastolic blood pressure is mainly determined by the resistance of the arterioles. This afterload is a function of total peripheral resistance. Because we cannot clinically calculate the total peripheral resistance, we use the diastolic blood pressure as a clinical index of afterload. There are three situations where afterload increases. First, hypertension. In a hypertension, because the diastolic blood pressure increases more than 80 mm of mercury, suppose up to 120 mm of mercury, the ventricle should contract more forcefully to pressurize more than 120 mm of mercury and overcome the elevated aortic pressure. Only then the valve opens and ejection starts. Thus, another definition of afterload is that the afterload is a load that the heart must eject blood against. Second, aortic stenosis also increases afterload. This is because in aortic stenosis, the aortic valve does not completely open during systole. As a result, it will be harder to eject the entire stroke volume. The third situation that increases afterload is vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction increases total peripheral resistance, thus increases afterload. To sum it up, afterload by definition is a load that the heart must eject blood against. The best clinical index of afterload is total peripheral resistance. However, TPR is not routinely calculated clinically, and thus we use diastolic blood pressure as a clinical index of afterload. The other indices of afterload are mean aortic pressure, systolic blood pressure, and ventricular wall tension during systole. For the USMLE, the most important one you have to memorize is diastolic blood pressure. 